Jambo. My name is Eric Otieno. Jambo is hello in Kenya. Jambo is a word we use to greet people. We say Jambo. Uh, my name is Eric. Like I said, I'm a guide in Kenya and I've been uh, guiding for the last 13 years. Uh, I enjoy my safaris and enjoy taking people on different parks, conservancies and game reserves around not only Kenya, but also in Tanzania. Uh, I'm here at Nixon Park, your county, and uh, you should come down and visit. It's an amazing place to see the different wildlife. It's a nice setup, different wildlife from all over the world. It's a nice place to learn about the wildlife if you love animals. Uh, I'm gonna share a little video about my uh, safari experience and uh, some of the shows that I've taken while doing safaris to some of the best parks in Kenya and Tanzania. Uh, keep it locked. So you can check me on email, uh, eric at esa-safaris.com or Otieno Eric, that's O-T-I-E-N-O -E at eric82 at yahoo.com. Just like I said, we take you to different parks. This is Amboseli National Park in Kenya. We had a situation here. The young calf was a little bit uncomfortable with an intruding male that had come into their herd. So he called for reinforcement and it was attacked him two against one. They tried to chase the bull, big bull away from the, from the herd. Such interesting things you can only see while you come on safari. Uh, Amboseli has about 1,800 elephants that have been studied the most in the whole of Africa by Dr. Cynthia Moss. She runs a research called the Amboseli Elephant Trust. Amboseli sits on the foot of Mount Kilimanjaro and what's provide life to Amboseli is the snow that melts on the, on, the, on the top of Mount Kilimanjaro and trickles down through the aquifers, underground aquifers and pops up at the Amboseli. So we have different swamps that many animals, elephants, zebras, uh, buffaloes, spend the better part of the day feeding on the soft grass and also drinking water. Elephants are very thirsty animals. They can drink up to 60 gallons of water. So a, a herd of 55 or a family of 55 can drink about 1 million gallon in a year. That's a lot of water. Apart from the swamps, we have other streams that never dries up. That's only because it's trickling from the Mount Kilimanjaro, which is about 25 miles away from the park. We do have a lot of bird life. As you can see, we have the cattle egret, which have a symbiotic relationship with the, with the elephant. They hitchhike on the back of the elephant and also they get free food. When the elephant walk on the ground, they sort of disturb the bugs and the insects on the ground and the cattle egrets get their food. We have so many, so many families uh, right now in Kenya, cases of poaching has gone down. So in the last two years, we've had an increase of elephant population, which is good news to so many people who love wildlife and conservationists uh, globally. So, like I said, elephants not only drink a lot of water, but also they feed a lot. An elephant can require about 150 kilograms of food every day. That's about 375 bean bag, uh, baked beans. That's a lot of baked beans, I say. Elephants live up to 60 to 70 years. 
and they have a gestation period of uh, 22 months. And normally one calf is born, but Amboseli is special because we had cases where twins have been born. Right now we have a famous elephant called Angela. She has two twins. And two years back, we also had another calf. We, had a, we also had another female that had two, had, had, two had, had twins as well. We enjoy coming here because we learn so much about the elephants. And also the elephants are so gentle. You tend to see how they interact, see the different families, and also you take nice shots. Asa safaris can take you there to experience all this. You can see the elephant, the baby elephant can be 90 to 80 kilo, 90 to 100 kilos when they are born. Oh, speaking of birds, we have so many different species of birds. This is called a lilac breasted roller. That's the national bird of Kenya. They have up to seven beautiful colors and they like to display their colors by rolling while uh, coating the females. We have giraffes, different species of giraffe. That's a Maasai giraffe. During the great migration, that's between uh, July, August, and September, we see a lot of uh, wildebeest and zebras that have made the long loop coming in from uh, Serengeti in Tanzania and, and uh, Maasai Mara in uh, Kenya. We have over 2 million wildebeest migrating together with the 750,000 zebras, 250,000 Thompson gazelles. These animals have a symbiotic relationship. Now, the zebras are known to be the scouts. Why so? Because they have good eyesight and also they feed on the top grass. Then they are followed by the wildebeest who like the short grass and then the Thompson gazelles who like the shortest of the grass. Apart from that, zebras have good eyesight and uh, the wildebeest have good sense of smell. So they follow each other on this great migration of, Willoughby, of, of wildlife. It's known to be the one of the wonders of the world because of the huge numbers of, of wildlife that have been doing this trek for a long time. And they cover about 1000 kilometers, which uh, runs from end of July, going all the way to October. You should come see this because uh, it's one of the most amazing thing you can witness while on while on earth it's a it's a it's a it's a it for me personally it's one of the best things seeing it especially from a hot air balloon you see just endless plains of wildebeest migrating and feeding and they have a, they have a funny sound i could i could i could imitate the sound for you uh, 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 uh. It's an amazing experience. And a lot of people come to see the migration, not only because of the big herds, but also they attract a lot of the cats and also the big predators. We have lots of lions. We have lots of cheetahs and also hyenas that follow the big herds. And why do they migrate? Let me ask you, why do they migrate? They migrate because they follow the grass. They migrate because they follow the water. What is life? Without water, there'll be no wildlife. Without water, there'll be no, no survival for these beautiful creatures. We enjoy hot air balloon ride mostly in the morning and you see lots of other species, lions, zebras, you see other cats and also just the landscape of the park is just amazing. You should do this. You should make this one your bucket list soon when it's ready to travel. I have been guiding for the last 13 years and it's been an amazing experience just taking people on the tours around. And the hot air balloon ride is one of the most amazing thing you can ever, you don't wanna miss. We have the big five. Do you know the big five? We have elephants, we have lions, and this is a, this is a leopard. It's one of the most elusive of the big cats. They are strong cats. They can pull up a 45 kilo carcass up a tree. Remember I said about the movement of the wildebeest and the zebras attract big cats. Yep, here we witnessed a lioness hunting to provide food for, for, its, cal for, the, for its cubs that were just waiting on the nearby bush. It's, uh, it's sad to see, but uh, it's, it's survival for the fetus, it's, it's nature, it's, 
it's what they have to do to provide food for their calves. These are the beautiful calves. And you can see when the lions are young, they tend to be darker and they have spots on them until they get about five months and the spots slowly disappear. But it's an amazing to see lots and lots of these during the great migration. Mm -hmm. Cubs are, can, are highly dependent on their mothers for the better part of maybe one, one to one and a half years of age. From two years, the males will be chased away from the, from the, from the pride and they try to form their own territory. But the females stay together. They have like a communal breastfeeding, sort of like a daycare. When the lioness will be out in the, in the wild hunting, some of the females, some of the lioness will take care of the cubs. Yep. They have a very social system, unlike any other cats. They're very, very social uh, cats. Lioness uh, can, be, can be very aggressive. And also we have other, 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 other big predators like the hyenas, which have been thought to be scavengers, but they are formidable hunters. I've seen some, some amazing hunts. It's sad to see, but yeah, that uh, I've been able to tell they are the most successful hunters of all the big uh, predators. They are very tenacious, they don't give up. They run down an animal to the point of exhaustion and how, what they do it is just, yeah, it's sad to see, but we take you to Serengeti National Park. This is one of the big parks, one of the oldest ecosystem in the whole world on this planet. We have uh, the migration that also takes place here. So between the months of September, most of the wildebeest will be going back from Masemara, going back to the Serengeti National Park. This is a national park that is big in, in Tanzania. We are fortunate enough to see a pride of 17, 17 lions uh, two Septembers ago. And uh, it was just amazing to see how the pride was, was happy. There was a lot of, there's a lot of food, there's water. And this pride had killed a baby, uh, that killed a zebra the previous night. And they were running down a stream to drink water. Seemed like the zebras are very salty, salty. That's what I thought. And also, apart from that, we've been trying to, to protect the land population because they're declining. There's a lot of uh, human wildlife conflict. They're also losing their territory because of uh, increase of human population. Uh, they get poisoned. And uh, some project, they try to track the lions through coloring. Like this, you can see this female, she had a collar on to track and also to try and, uh, and uh, monitor their movement and see how healthy. She had four cubs. So we also thought that she might be a very important breeder. So they wanted, they wanted to keep her safe and see how she moves about with the, with the new members of the family. Lioness can live up to 17 years. With the male have a shorter lifespan of between 10 to 12 years. And, uh, and uh, they, have, they have a lot of things to, to take care of. So sometimes they die early because they get injured while trying to protect their territory. And also they're not very good hunters. So when they're alone there, they have a shorter lifespan. Unlike the lioness, which is the most formidable and also they are the, they're the hunters. They do most of the hunting. In, uh, in the land, in the land pride. Oh, this is one of the amazing places you can ever visit on the earth. This is in Gorongoro crater. It's one of the oldest calderas. It's an old volcano that is based in Tanzania. On this crater, there's about 30,000 wildlife living in this, in this crater. We have elephants, we have rhinos, we have zebras, wildebeest. Uh, we have big predators, lions, we have uh, hyenas. It's an amazing crater that has been protected that and also needs to be preserved. It's a world heritage site. 
uh, you can see the crater rim around. It's it's quite steep and there's a, there's a de it's a decent steep and the accent is quite high. And we don't have giraffes here because of the decent steep and accent. But I, we were fortunate enough to see seven male lions on one of the game drives there. A lot of predators and uh, we need to protect such heritage sites uh, for future generation to come and experience these amazing, 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 I would say amazing, many times amazing park. Uh, a lot of things have happened over the years. We have global warming, which is affecting most of the streams, most of the lakes in Africa. And we need to talk about it. We need to be fair. We need to be open to see what we can do. One of the lakes in the, in the caldera is drying up. We witnessed it was turning into salt, like a big salty, surface and it's an ecosystem on its own nothing will survive there we were fortunate enough also to see this spotted zebra have you seen a spotted zebra only uh, we only see about the striped zebra but we are fortunate to see the spotted zebra that uh, had a special special meaning to so many people that wow it needed to be protected and uh, the mother was pregnant so we were just waiting to see what will be the next fowl look like. We're waiting to see. We have other birds that are very important. The birds that some people tend to overlook, tend to, tend to think they're bad because they bring like bad omens. We have the vultures. Different types of vultures exist in Africa. We have the biggest being the lapid faced vulture. We have the hooded vulture. And you can see down there, we are the ones with the white, white feathers. Those are called the African white-backed vulture. Why do I talk about the vultures? Vultures play a very important role. They are the cleanup crew of the planet. They clean to make it safe, where otherwise some of the carcass if left in the wild, they, bring, they can bring airborne diseases, which will be harmful to not only the wildlife, but also to humans. So they take care, they have good eyesight, and uh, they spot a carcass or a carrion within within a within the shortest time, and they like fresh kill and they clean up everything to make the environment safer for all of us. We need to protect them. They're in danger because we have a lot of urbanization taking place. They get electrocuted with the poor power lines, and some of the farmers use uh, pesticides that are harmful to these uh, birds, and they end up dying. I talk about cats and I love cats. I love, I love hyenas. I love, I, love, I love big predators like hyenas. I love cats like cheetah. This is a family of cheetah that I saw. Two brothers, they were young, uh, probably about two and a half years old. And I could tell they were not very good hunters. Could we tried to see them hunt, but they, they were not very, they, they didn't, uh, they, they're not, they're not, they were not very sharp in hunting. These are the fastest land animal. They can do 112 kilometers per hour. We have cultural tours that uh, brings on board uh, people living around the conservancies. These are the Maasai tribe that are found in Kenya and also in Tanzania. We can take you there to learn about the culture. Our tours is not only because to teach you about the wildlife, but also to engage the community. You learn something and you take back some of the great memories that most of our travelers have spoken about is just the cultural visits. Like I said, what is a very important thing is a very vital for survival of people. We have the Samburu tribesmen. We are, lo we are north of the country. It's very dry there. And this, this village was, from, was fortunate to have been uh, able to have a borehole, which was donated by well-wishers from the United States. And uh, they could be able to drink water used for cooking and also for washing. A family like this can need about 20 gallons of water each day. And some of the places still need water, which is something we can do to provide a good life for them. Mm -hmm. Water is life, like I said, not only for wildlife, but also to, to the survival of uh, animals in the whole of the African continent. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this small video that I've did. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more people to travel when it's safe and ready to travel. Check me out, we are, we are on Instagram, uh, ESA Safaris. 
I'm on uh, Twitter. You can find me on Twitter, Enrique Safaris, at Enrique Safaris. And also you can write an email to me directly if you need any inquiries about safaris and, and, and the conservation questions you may, you, may, you may have. My email is O T I E N O 82 at yahoo.com. Or you can write another email, it's Eric, E R I C at E S A hyphen safaris.com. Please, I'd be glad to share more about the wildlife that is found within the East African country. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Eric. You're welcome. <laughs>